Do you think it's the toughest Euroleague ever because of the amount of the teams that are spending lots of money and the quality of the players? It, yeah, I s first would to me be the huge influx of high-level players that have joined the Euroleague as opposed to the number of exits that we had this year, which generally uh, is greater. So it's, it's much easier for you to call somebody at 2019 and convince him to come to Euroleague than it was 2014. Absolutely. Much more. Yes. You know, I think, I think that's very much the case. Uh, how do you see Olympiacos in this Euroleague? What's the team goal? Well, you know, I've always said that specifying and stating a goal, that, that's easy. You know, you come and you say, you know, we should be this. That, that, that's the simple thing to do. And I don't know how realistic that is in September, to be honest with you, unless you have uh, a full roster from the previous season and you've reached certain levels or certain heights that you have the right to um, sort of build yourself on. When you're a new team like we are, the thing that you're looking for is to uh, motivate for and demand a level and a kind of a commitment to excellence on a daily basis that ultimately will lead to results. The goal setting in terms of place and, and final result, it, it comes a little bit later when you can be realistic about where you're at as a, as a team and what your, you know, what your true potential is. Many players left this summer, many players came. That doesn't mean that the players before uh, last year were bad, or but you probably wanted to change something, you had something else in mind. Did you achieve that? Well, I understand many of the guys that left, left for, from their motivation to go. You know, if a guy, you know, like Nigel Williams-Goss gets an NBA, three-year NBA contract, you know. You can't keep him. It's not because you want him to leave. Yes, exactly. It's because he got a great opportunity and he wanted to, to, to take that opportunity. And, you know, you, you as an organization, you, you know, you're, you're happy for the kid. If, a, you know, if another player maybe gets a bigger opportunity or a bigger contract in another place and, and they want to take it because their particular deal has finished, then, you know, that's, that's the reality of, of professional yeah. sports, you know. So, you know, some of the changes perhaps were, were, were looked for, were things that we, we wanted to happen. Other things were not things that necessarily we uh, were desiring of or desirable for. But that's the reality. So you you know you, you you have to rebuild or build in a different way and, and and make it work. I know coaches are never satisfied with the teams <laughs> with their teams. In one week there is a, the Euroleague is going on. Uh, are you satisfied from the preseason? Well, I'm not satisfied with the preseason because we've only had one practice with all 13 players or 14 players on our roster together. Okay. So that of course is a cause for concern and the reasons for that of course are the circumstances of the World Cup where we had many participants and some injuries which can happen to anyone any time and the fact that we have not been able to work together as a full unit throughout the entire course of the preparation you know that, that that's concerning on the other hand that's the reality and you know you deal with it you know we have a good uh, week ahead of us uh, where we can practice and, and get everyone on the same page and, and uh, you know build from there and that's what we'll do. I don't want to stay at your personal problem I only have one question. Sure. Did your personal problem change the way you look, you look life? Um, you have other priorities sure. that you didn't think uh, before? I mean, I'm asking not, you because not, not, you have said many times that that's not an excuse for my work. Right. And I think that's the bravest yeah. from all the things and, and in, you the, know, in that story. I, I didn't say that as, as a, a cliche. A cliche. Yes. You know, I, I really meant that. And, yes. and, I, and I feel that, yes, off the court, there are things that 
indeed have changed and have to change. But on the court, I need to be the same person and the same leader and the same uh, uh, example for my, for my players and the same representative for my organization. And nothing less should be expected, uh, and, and, and nor should I expect anything less for myself. Now, do I get on the court and, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, slide and defend as maybe once I could as a coach even to set an example? No. But that's okay. I wasn't that good at it anyway later on in my career. <laughs> okay. General question. Where do you think basketball is heading? I mean, we don't see that much pick and roll now. You, I know you like a lot uh, ISO game, isolations in your game. Is it just athleticism? Is it fast way? Is it? We see at the World Cup, Luis Cola, 39 years old, dominating the game. We see Spanulis at 37 years old, being Still a go-to guy for a Euroleague team. Yeah. What do you think basketball is here? Is going? Uh, I think that probably what what's going to happen is that the game will simply continue to evolve as it always does but there in my mind now that for example the three-point shot has become such a big part of the game i believe that will also turn around some yes. you know if the game now is dominated by the three-point shot i believe the game is going to turn in another direction and we're going to see more uh, Uh, inside perhaps game an inside or... game because that comes in cycles. You know, when, when you see yes. better and more dominant inside players coming back, then you see the game be played more inside to out as as opposed to outside to in. Great. That was awesome, man.